Hey everyone, I'd like to thank Mark 13 Records for posting this recent video, Prophecy Alert, Anarchy in Bethlehem. I'm going to play a part of this clip and it's really important that people start thinking about the things that are going on in Jerusalem because our Heavenly Father gives us Jerusalem as the pointing, it's the barometer for the world. And we're going to listen to Netanyahu give a quick little address regarding some of the, the stabbings and stuff that's been going on there. But we need to think about the words that he's saying. Peace and safety. And then we're going to read a little quick scripture after I, this video plays. And checkpoints didn't prevent the latest of near-daily stabbing attacks on Israelis by Palestinians, this one at a bus stop in central Jerusalem. Close to 40 people, including children, have died in the two weeks of violence, from stabbings, shootings, car rammings, and security crackdowns. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told Parliament he welcomes the immediate resumption of peace talks, but says security has to come first. And above all, in order for peace to be achieved, the Palestinians must finally recognize the right of the Jewish people's nation-state to exist. I want to go to 1 Thessalonians 5. 1 Thessalonians 5, 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. Verse 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. And why is his why would his day come as a thief? It's because people are not watching. In other words, the false Christ is going to come and he's going to be disguised as Christ. We learn that in Revelation 13 in one place. But he's coming disguised as Messiah. So people are the world will be deceived by this false Messiah. So when the true Christ appears at the last and seventh trump. After Satan has been revealed, the son of perdition, the abomination of desolation, then people are going to be really surprised because they think that Satan has been, that that was the Christ when he's the Antichrist instead of Christ. Because Satan comes at the sixth seal, the sixth trump, and the sixth vial. 666 is his number. That comes before seven, the last trump. Verse 3, for when they shall say, now catch this, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. And then Paul tells us, but ye brethren are not in darkness. You know why we're not in darkness? Because he's already told us that the false Christ comes first. He gives us 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 through 53, the last trump. We know that Christ comes at the last trump, so anything that comes before that, guess what? It's the false Christ. Okay, but ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. You shouldn't be caught off guard if you know the signs of the coming of this false Christ. If you're prepared and you know he comes first, then you will not be deceived. Now, if you're in a denomination that teaches you to embrace this first Messiah that shows up, and he's coming to Jerusalem, he's going to stand in the holy place and claim himself as Christ and Messiah and God. We learn that in 2 Thessalonians 2. For those who would like to go research this, so, I mean, there's no reason to be overtaken as by a thief. When you know the game plan, when you know it's been foretold, Christ tells us everything has been foretold. I highly encourage people to go research some of these scriptures that coincide to verse 3 right here. But just go check them out, and you can uh, cross-reference them to this travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape in the sudden destruction and Satan is the destroyer this is Apollyon peace and safety keywords 
And above all, in order for peace to be achieved, the Palestinians must finally recognize the right of the Jewish people's nation state to exist. The latest clashes erupted over a contested holy site, the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound in Jerusalem, revered by both Muslims and Jews. But at the root of the anger are deep-seated frustrations among younger Palestinians, angry with their own leadership's failure to deliver on peace efforts, angry that Palestinian statehood is still no more than a dream. You know, there's all this violence all of a sudden taking place in they're claiming that it's the Palestinians doing this and the Palestinians are claiming it's the Israelis doing this and that. Well, we don't really know who's doing what. And we know how black ops works or to some extent. I mean, people disguise themselves as one thing and when they're really another. So, I mean, we don't know what kind of shenanigans is going on, but that's really not so much important as it is the fact that it's going on, it's taking place, and there is an agenda at foot here. It's for a bigger plan, and when you start understanding that the area is being prepared for the false Christ, the false Messiah to show up, people really need to think about this and understand that most of the people over there do not believe in Jesus Christ. They're not looking for a second advent. They're looking for the first advent because most denied that Jesus Christ was a savior. All who denied that Jesus Christ came at that first advent, that he was born of a virgin and that he was the son of God and that he died on the cross and then he resurrected. Those who do not believe that, they're not looking for his second advent. It's like he didn't exist. So who are they going to worship? Who are they going to embrace that shows up on the Temple Mount claiming he is the Messiah? Better really think about this because it will be Apollyon. He comes first. So do not be, allow yourself to be deceived. Because a great deception is coming. Revelation 13. The whole world will be deceived if they are not in Christ, if they are not understanding that that false Christ comes first. So if you're in a denomination that teaches you to embrace this Messiah, this first Messiah that shows up, well, welcome to the mark of the beast because that's what it is. You're being deceived because God's word tells us false Christ comes first. 666. Last trump is our Lord Jesus Christ, second advent. And in reference to this scripture, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Daniel 5, 3 through 6 is really interesting because I recently did a video about the, is the third temple getting ready to be erected on the Temple Mount question. And I have found a, a website, the Temple Institute, and they're claiming that they have everything in, in readiness to be erected on the Temple Mount. I mean, we're talking, they've even got the golden cups, the vessels, uh, the robes for the priests. They've even got the priests picked out, all this kind of stuff. Well, let's check out verse 3 here in Daniel 5. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines drank in them. Verse 4, they drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. Verse 5, in the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace, and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Verse 6, Then the king's countenance was changed, and his tr thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loosed, and his knees smote one against another. In other words, he wet his pants. Isn't that interesting that that response with this, this sudden destruction. 
and it's all tied into the vessels and possibly the Temple Mount. Something to think about. And then it also goes back to Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Verse 39, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, took them all away and destroyed them. Do you understand the word took? Took them all away, destroyed them in the flood. The only ones that were left was Noah, his family, and two of every flesh. That's what remained. And they, were, they remained because they were safely aboard the ark of the Lord, following his commandments. So, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So there's going to be a big flood at the end times. And we learn in Revelation 12, 9, 6, 13, it's a flood of lies. Satan's power is in his mouth. And then we also have a reference to Luke 17, uh, talking about Sodom. The Lord rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. And then Luke 21, 34 through 35, and take heed to yourself, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares. Verse 35, for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. And that snare is it's Satan's snare. The false Christ, seducing and beguiling everyone, the whole world, if they do not know who he is, if they embrace that first one that shows up, they're going to be snared and seduced. And there's some excellent scriptures right here in reference to, to as travail upon a woman with child. Isaiah 43, 6 through 9 is amazing. Our Heavenly Father is gathering all nations to his holy land. So I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes. And the deaf that have ears. He didn't say that they could see or they could hear. He just said the blind people. Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Question. Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified. Or let them hear and say it is truth. Wow. Wow. Okay, so what's going on? How are we to know exactly what is going on? I think it's pretty obvious that it's very hard for us to understand what's going on except by using our Heavenly Father's Word in order to get that deeper understanding of what is going on. So God bless and let's just stay watchful.